everybody, E here, I got a package, and another book haul video. So, um, I was waiting on the final book to arrive before I did my book haul video, and it just now got here, so Amazon's packaging, um, it just now got here, so we are going to do a book, a, a, a package video, along with our book haul, and I got, get over there, The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling, y'all see that, that's such a pretty cover. That's, if you can't see it, that's a hand grabbing onto some rocks or something. I think it's about cave uh, dwelling or cave spelunk spelunking. Spelunking, yes. Um, I think it's about that. It's uh, when Jair Price lied her way into this expedition. She thought she'd be mapping mineral deposits and the greatest dangers might be cave collapses and gear malfunctions. She also thought the fat paycheck meant she'd get a skilled surface team monitoring her suit and environment, keeping her safe keeping her sane. Instead, she got M. But uh, if you guys want to check out the rest of this, I'm not going to linger too much on each book. I'll give you a little overview about what they're about, or a little bit about the author, a little bit about why I grabbed them. I know some people go into the entire description for a book. That's not me. I find that insanely boring. And when I watch book haul videos that do that, I tend to scrub to the next book. I'm sorry, don't hate me, but <laughs> I'm going to give you a bit about why I got the book, and if the uh, description is why I got it, then I'll read you a little bit of that. But this one it definitely was was the description and the cover, because holy shit, that's sexy. It's from Harper Voyager. So next up, I want to tell you once again, bookmarks! <laughs> a Stranger Dream sent me a couple bookmarks, um, and it gave me a code to give you guys a discount. So once again, down there in the doobly-doo, Click on that link, go over there and check out A Stranger Dream, and yes, those of you asking, yes, this is the same company that did the uh, cover for my Cruelty and Joy series on Patreon, um, so, but if you want to grab these bookmarks, which are super awesome, sexy, um, click on the link down there in the doobly-doo and type in, uh, at checkout, Lorne5 is a discount code, and it gets a discount on the entire order. Next up, I got, yet, I couldn't pass this up because it was a quarter, once again, Yukio Mishima, um, I didn't like Star, if y'all remember my review of that one. This one is The Sound of Waves, and I figure since I, since I just found it for a quarter, I'd go ahead and grab this one too. So, uh, yeah. Um, like I said, the only reason I got it is because it was a quarter, and I might end up reading this one before I read Confessions of a Mask because it's so super short. Next up, I have a couple of amazing finds. Um, th the first one is First Blood by David Morell, which is, of course, the... Uh, the book that inspired Rambo. From what I understand, two completely different experiences um, between the book and the movie. So I, I like the Rambo movie all right, but from what I hear, um, Morell did a fantastic job with the actual book. So I'm definitely going to give this a check out. I might even do a book versus movie for it. I know, I know, I still haven't done Witches of Eastwick. I apologize. I'm so far behind and up. It's shot. I just haven't had a chance to load it. For some odd reason, anything over 30 minutes, um, my internet right now is killing. Um, the only video over 30 minutes that I've been able to upload has been uh, the Stephen King Theorist with Black House, and I have no idea why. Ever since they kill the, the internet died here, I've been having problems uploading long videos, but we will continue to try until we get those bastards uploaded. Next up, and that was a quarter. That was a quarter at the library sale. Am I off? I'm off center, aren't I? Oh well, somebody will just have to be upset. Um, next up, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson was a quarter at the library. Holy shit. So, uh, yeah, um, they just had a big pile of classics. What they're saying, get classics for a quarter. Uh, the Haunting of Hill House and uh, First Blood, and then there was one more. Yeah, there was one more. Maybe it was two. I can't remember. I know the last one uh, was a uh, was a quarter also, but we'll get to that. But, yeah, Haunting of Hill House. I've never read this. I read... Uh, we have always lived in a castle, and I wasn't too impressed, but the, everybody who read my uh, review of that one said, go check out this one, uh, The Haunting of Hill House, and it has one of the most famous opening lines of all time. I can probably, like, something walked in Hill House and it walked alone, something like that. Let me, um, let's see here. Let me try and find it. Uh, no live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. Even larks and katydids... Did, Katy Katydids are supposed by some to dream. Hill House, not sane, stood by itself against its hills, holding darkness within. 
It had stood for 80 years and might stand for 80 more. Within, walls continued up, upright, bricks met neatly, floors were firm, the doors were sensibly shut. Silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House, and whatever walked there walked alone. I was under the impression that whatever walked there walked alone was like the opening line. So my apologies for reading all that, but it has the, uh, the most famous opening paragraph of all time. Um, I know everybody talks about that one line, whatever walked in Hill House walked alone. It's a pretty rad line. Um, all right, so next up we have a two gifts, actually. Uh, the Wolf Sour, you guys probably saw this in my, I won't go into it too much, but this is the last uh, McCammon book that I needed from my McCammon collection. And author uh, Tim, what in the world is his name? Tim Meyer, I almost called him my buddy Tim Feely. I have a lot of Tims. There's a Tim that comes in chat all the time. There's Tim Meyer, there's Tim Feely, there's another Tim nobody else knows about. I got Tims coming out the wazoo. So anyways, yeah, Tim Meyer, author, great dude. Um, he sent me the Wolf Sour because he saw on Instagram that I needed it and he didn't want any uh, compensation or anything. I did give him a shout out on the channel, but he didn't even ask for that. He just said, you know, thanks for doing that. And he, he's a cool dude. Great guy. Just sent me a book. Um, anywhere else you go, it's like five bucks. So thanks for saving me five bucks, Tim, if you watch the video. Next up, we have um, my buddy Nick sent me The Frighteners by Stephen Laws. I don't think this is the last one I needed for my Laws collection, but it, but it's awfully close to being done. Um, mostly I have his old leisure paperbacks, but this one is a, I don't even know who published, New English Library. Um, it's also, either it's the Australian version of the book, which is cool. Um, it was $12.95 in Australia, but it was only $4.99 in, uh, in the UK. Crazy. So, uh, yeah, uh, so new English library copy of The Frighteners. No, it is not, the movie with Michael J. Fox and Jake Busey is not based on this book. It's something completely different. In fact, The Frighteners, um, it's uh, a mob term from what it says in the opening of the book, uh, to put the frighteners on someone's, like put the screw on them to, you know, pay back a loan or something. Next up is another one that I got uh, for a quarter from the library is Memento Mori. You, I can't find this book for under 15 bucks, not even on Amazon. I think the lowest I ever found it was $12, but it's super short and I couldn't see spending that. It's 223 pages. Um, it's supposed to be a classic, uh, like, mystery horror kind of deal. And uh, it's by Muriel Spark. Yeah. So I've had this one in my Amazon gift cart forever. Uh, it's on a list of must-read books for, like, horror fans, something like that. I can't even remember where I read. It's probably some BuzzFeed something. But, yeah, Memento Mori was another quarter um, book that I... Quarter... A book that I got from the library for a quarter. I just don't below all your words, see? Okay, next up is a gift from my friend Terry. She's always sending me stuff, which is The Girls by Emma Klein. <laughs> I, I told kind of a funny story about this one. I read this one while I was doped up on some pretty high pain medicine, and I wrote a review of just imaginings. Um, stuff that didn't actually even happen in the book. Uh, as like she was always buffing her muffin is what I wrote. Uh, I thought the book was full of masturbation and I got some plot points right but for some odd reason I imagined or dreamt that this woman was always masturbating throughout the book. I have no idea why but that's what I wrote. So yeah um, I'm gonna try and read it again. The, the first time I tried to read it it was on audiobook. Now I'm gonna try to actually read the text. I had somebody who wanted a buddy read with me. Was it Richard? Richard was it you um, that wanted to read it with me? Let me know down there in the doobly-doo. So next up, we have this one I've been looking for forever. I finally found a used copy of, um, and I haven't been able to finish this one, but I am such a huge fan of the original book that I had to get the sequel. That's the Pilo Traveling Show, which is the sequel to the Pilo Family Circus, I think is the name of that one. Uh, it's a terrific book. And I grabbed this one. It pristine copy. Pr just uh, like, it's, like it's brand new. I'm not sure why it was so cheap. I think it was five bucks from a Goodwill, I think it was. Um, but it's like, it hasn't even been read. There's no marks or scuffs or anything on it. Um, it's a perfect straight from the manufacturer is what it seems like. And there's no writing in it, anything like that. So I'll probably get into this one relatively soon. Hopefully I can finish it because before I only had it on ebook and I think that's part of the reasons why I kept on quitting it. Um, I don't think it's actually the book itself. Next up is something that's probably going to end up getting sold. Um, and the reasoning for that is I, uh... I've seen the book everywhere, but I don't know if it's my jam or not. And that is, uh, I don't even know what it's called, The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. 
If anybody wants this book, I'm willing to let go of it for a dollar plus shipping, if anybody wants it. Um, I got it for a quarter at the library. It does have some sticker residue right here, so I can clean it up for you. I could charge you 50 cents. No, I'm kidding. Um, if you want me to clean it up for you, that's fine. Uh, it's going to smell like goo gone when you get it back, but if you don't mind, I'll just go ahead and send it. Um, I don't think I'll ever get to it. It's a pretty stout book. I think it's over 400 pages. Yeah, 440 pages, and I just don't think it's my kind of deal. Uh, oh, also, someone it's a destroyed book also. So the pu publisher didn't receive any the publisher or the author didn't receive any money for it. Uh, the price has been cut off of it. But uh, yeah, a former POW comes home from the Vietnam War, a changed and volatile man. When he loses yet another job, he makes an impulsive decision. He will move his family north to Alaska, where they will live off the grid. Never mind, I take back my offer. I'm going to at least try this. Um, I don't know what the writing is going to uh, writing is going to be like, but I'm all there for that. Just picks up and leaves. 13-year-old Lenny, a girl coming of age in a tumultuous time, caught in the riptide of her parents' passionate, stormy relationship, dares to hope that a new land will lead to a better future for a family. Yeah, this sounds good. Um, I may put it up for sale anyways, so if somebody wants it, the first person to comment that they want it, um, if I don't like it, you get it for a dollar plus shipping. So, yeah, there you go. The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. Also, if it's good... Um, I like literary fiction, um, I don't like contemporary fiction, and I certainly don't like romance. If it's anything like that, heavy on that, please let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Or if you know me well, and you've read it, and you think I won't like it, let me know why you think I won't like it. If you think I'll like it, let me know why you think I'll like it. Argue your case down there in the doobly-doo. Okay, so, oh, I got a stack Leaning Tower Pisa. The last one that was in the, I think it was either in the classic section, or it was just up on the shelf for the library sale, a uh, quarter a book, was Elmore Leonard's Get Shorty. And yeah, I saw all you out there, hey, I thought you've never read uh, Elmore Leonard. I haven't. That's why I got the book, you sillies. So yeah, Elmore Leonard, I, I follow a lot of his writing uh, advice, but I don't, I've never actually read one of his books. Uh, he has a, and what's kept me away this long is, there's a, there's a quote from him, not really a quote, but I saw an interview with him, where he said an old woman came up to him in the store, it seems like all authors have an old woman came up to him in the store, Stephen King story is a Shawshank Redemption story, if you guys know that one, let me know down in the doobly doo, but uh, an old woman came up to him and said, I really loved, and he did, he did the accent too, I really loved that movie Get Shorty, and he says, well did you, <laughs> did you read the book? And she said, well, no, I didn't know it was, it was a book until just, a, just until after I saw the movie. And he goes, well, then you're no good to me, or you're no use to me, is what he said. I, it seemed like a really dickish move, and I, I stayed away from him until then. I said, I, you know, I'm not going to buy the guy's work, but if I ever find his book on sale or used or whatever, I will try him out. And if I like him, then I'll end up buying his work, you know. So, there's the story, guys. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I got Get Shorty by Elmore Leonard. Um, whether or not he's a douche nozzle or not, if he's a good author, he's a good author. I'll, I'm definitely here for this. Now let me try and fix this Leaning Tower of Pisa over here real quick. Because I have absolutely no room out in this uh, out in this office anymore. I just made room by doing the big book sales on Twitter. Y'all catch those? Um, and I restocked again. So I, I need to get rid of about 100 more books. And I don't go through the stuff that I plan on selling. I don't do in these book haul videos. But I usually bring in at least 100 books uh, a month. And I'm not going to bore you sitting through a bunch of books that, uh, that you know, I'm not going to keep and I have no interest in reading. Like, I buy James Patterson books all the time just to resell them. Um, they, they pull a big profit for me. Uh, Clive, Clive Cussler, James Patterson, uh, John Sanford, all these books I will never read, even though everybody keeps telling me to read John Sanford. I'm going to try it. I have a stack of Lucas Davenport novels over here from the 1st to, I think, to the 10th. Um, so if I like them, then I'll keep them. But I always sell the later ones because those ones are usually the most popular. I have a couple of Lee Childs down here. I can't stand Lee Child. But the last book for this book haul is The Necromancer's House by Christopher Buhlman. Um, I read and absolutely loved those across the river. And it hit my top 20 list of all time. Whether or not it'll stay at number 20 or not, who knows. But uh, I grabbed this one because it was super cheap on Amazon. A new copy. I did not buy a used copy. This is a brand new copy off Amazon. It was super cheap for the hardcover, so I went ahead and grabbed it. I think it was like 10 11 bucks, something like that. But yeah, uh, this is the only other one of his that really piqued my interest. Um, now, I'm not saying that he can write 
that that the books that don't pique my interest won't be great. I mean, with Insomnia, Insomnia and Lisi story, if I read the descriptions for those books, I never and and went off just that, I never would have read them. Um, me being a Super King fan, of course, I read them eventually, and I love them. Um, but with with this author, he hasn't quite won my trust, so I'm gonna read one more. That uh, I know that's funny to say, but I always give authors two chances. Um, even when I like them, and it takes at least two books for me to go, okay, you're you're someone I'm going to buy from uh, all the time now. Uh, so if you've read anything else by Christopher Bullman and want to give me a recommendation for something that I should try, that's fine. But I'm going to read this one first. I think the only other one that looked decent was like the Suicide Motorcycle Club or the Motorcycle Suicide Club, something like that. Seemed interesting. Um, but yeah, so I got this one. This is the last one uh, that that uh, for the for the list. But uh, it, it's very intriguing. I'm not usually a witch and warlock and all that stuff kind of deal, but the, uh, the rest of the premise seem interesting to me. I'll go ahead and read this to you. Andrew Ranulf Blankenship is a handsome, stylish, nonconformist with wry wit, wry wit, a classic Mustang, and a massive library. i got to admit, that's one of the reasons why I picked it up. Um, he is also a recovering alcoholic and a practicing warlock able to speak with the dead through film. One of my uh, number one guilty pleasures is witch fiction. Um, I really enjoy stuff about witches, um, but it tends, when when the, it's a warlock, it tends to be, I, I don't know what it is, but people rarely get warlocks right. And it's not like there's some standard that I have, it's just, it, usually the warlocks come off kind of kind of laughable. <laughs> I mean, it's also the same with the male wizards in Harry Potter. I always found them laughable. I don't know if there's a little sexism going on there with me um, not liking the male wizards and how a man with like supernatural powers seems silly to me, but it's completely fine for a woman to have it. I don't know what kind of gender bias I have there, but hey, it's the truth. Um, so I, I was, but it's still the closest one that I could that I read from the descriptions that kind of piqued my interest. So I was like, let's give this one a try also. Um, so yeah, this is the last one from the book haul, the uh, Necromancer's House. Uh, I also am a huge fan of the cover. I'm not gonna go sit here and say that it's the whole reason that I bought it. But it's pretty close. Anyways, um, if you have your own book haul videos, please link them down there in the doobly-doo. I say this every time, but they are some of my favorite content here on YouTube. Um, I watch book hauls from strangers. I watch book hauls from friends. I love book hauls. I love watching people talk about the whys of why they buy things. It's I feel like it's the best way to get to know somebody um, through this, in, this whole internet uh, shenanigans. <laughs> it's the best way to, to get to know somebody is to uh, kind of lurk on their buying habits. So that's why I watch the book hauls. I get to know somebody rather quickly whether or not I want to consume their content or not, whether or not I want to follow them, whether or not I want to be a friend of theirs, that kind of deal. And I watch probably out of all the videos that I watch, I only comment on probably 5% of the videos. So if you're a friend of mine and your videos are up and you're like, why hasn't he commented? I rarely comment because I watch so much and also the way I have my room set up I usually am watching it on the screen with my tablet charging across the room, so unless it's something that really, really grabs my brains, like you have to say something, I rarely ever comment, so I apologize, um, but if you ever do a video and you want me to specifically answer questions for you or anything like that, you're going to have to ask me specifically in the video, hey E, what do you think about this thing? But uh, yeah, so definitely, even if you don't have a video, please leave um, your book hauls down there in the doobly-doo. Just give me a list. Dustin, I love your list. E everybody else who puts their list down there, I appreciate you. It's Like I said, it's another thing I can get to know you without a whole lot of input given between the both of us. I see your buying habits. I have a good idea of what kind of person you are. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book haul video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!